Hello and welcome back to Ray's Gaming in a new Diablo 4 video. Today I've got a bit of a discussion video for you, a bit of feedback I suppose, based on the information we had in that recent 1.1.1 campfire chat. While we don't know the full details of the patch that's coming next week, or at least the information is, we know what seems to be most of it. And I think it sounds good, but what about the general stuff with Season 1 being introduced, there's all those new mechanics and details, and a lot of it wasn't really what I expected. Both good and bad I mean. While I am enjoying my time, it's also true that there are a good amount of things that are a bit weird and yeah even bad about season one so basically i've got 10 things to talk about today that i think the game needs to see after 1.1.1 launches so with the concept introduced let's begin i'm gonna walk over to it now in game because you know what i'm gonna talk about it's number one the stash i'll be quick on this because i've talked about it before you probably know what i'm gonna say but as you can see my stash is completely and utterly full this stash is so unbelievably pruned that there's next to nothing in it that i don't want to keep for a different purpose here or there i'm completely stuck which will lead me to point two in a moment in that patch chat they said they're finally introducing the new promise stash tab which will help with this tiny amount of space that we have i could go on about how we need not one more tab but 10 or more like 100 but we all know that what's funny about the stash in season one though is the biggest pain point for everyone is that the stash is too small and we just don't have enough space right but they introduced hearts these incredible interesting hearts of season one that actually take up inventory room and therefore stash room as you can see each individual heart takes up one slot gems were a major issue for this reason right except they take up one slot per 50 gems and so one heart taking up one slot is insane i know it's complicated like how would you make them stack because they have different roles obviously you've got to separate them but the point is the stash was a massive issue and in season one they made it so much much worse. My feedback for this then would be to create new unique tabs such as well a tab that only has uniques in it and takes up no space otherwise a stash that has only malignant hearts in it maybe gems whatever a separate thing that doesn't take up normal room for this mechanic that takes up so much room i request again then a proper filter system beyond just pressing a sort button meaning i could organize by aspects so the aspects are next to each other and organized to compare in that way or by ancestral so i only see those there are many ways you could create a filter system it's crazy we don't have one or like a search bar here or wherever where i can type in say the specific name of the aspect i'm looking at like shielding storm and then it just highlights all of the shielding storm aspects that i have in the stash currently the current system isn't just bad i think it's terrible i think it's always frustrating to interact with and that's why it's number one in this video it's the thing i want to see most changed and i wanted to see it change in pre-season the fact that we're getting one extra tab it's not gonna do it Moving on, let's talk about something different like character slots. As you can see, I have 10 out of 10 slots completely filled. I have my one singular seasonal character here at the bottom after deleting a bank alt. As you can see, I also have my original main and my original alt on the eternal realm. Then the remaining slots are all used up by different bank characters. Let me just pick one and go on to it. As you can see, I'm on my bank alt now and how a bank alt works is it has its inventory. This is literally just like maybe two thirds of the space that you get in a stash. And as you can see, it's got really important stuff on it. Aspects that are worth a lot, uniques, fully upgraded. Basically, these lead into different builds for different classes. If I were to delete this character, I would delete all of the stuff here that is really important and very useful to my Eternal Realm characters. This character in specific, I cannot afford to delete. So she's just taken up a slot. And that is the same for most of these bank holds. I'm going to have to delete some of these to actually get other slots. So hey, maybe I'm allowed to make like a rogue alt or whatever in a seasonal character. The fact that my seasonal characters aren't on a second tab separate from my eternal realms with a second roster of say 10 out of 10 slots to use is crazy to me. My fear is that this is intentional, that they're gonna introduce some sort of like pay money, get an extra slot for characters or something like that. I hope that's a jaded concern on my part and would never happen in this game, but I also wouldn't be that surprised. It's a problem and yeah, I wanted to highlight it. Moving on for number three, it's time for us to talk about malignant tunnels. These are really cool, that new concept to work on, farm a lot more hearts, guaranteed way to fight these malignant elite and enemies. But the fact is, their XP is set in stone. You know, these aren't nightmare dungeons. There isn't going to be like glyph XP at the end. There isn't going to be better loot rewards at the end. It is ultimately kind of a niche aspect of season one that you won't really engage with at a certain point most of the time. Why on earth are they not found in sigils? Like, why can't I find the six malignant dungeons as nightmare versions of malignant tunnels? Why are they not 
in this roster. It seems like such a no-brainer and like a waste. Introducing them to the Nightmare Dungeon pool would then mean, hey, we get six more types of dungeons to do. We're not always just doing malignant dungeons, but they come up occasionally. And that means, hey, we get a bit of extra malignant heart options. They're like a nice sigil to see. Genuinely not sure why they aren't Nightmare Dungeons or a Nightmare Dungeon pool anyway. I'm not sure why we're not being encouraged more to interact with them. On that note, for point four, let's talk about the Echo of Ashan, which is a weird unexplained system of summoning each tier of Ashan to actually unlock the next level of Echo. Basically, if you don't know, which you probably don't, once you defeat Vashan as part of the main story, you have to then summon the Echo of him by going to a specific well, three of six dungeons, going to the end of that dungeon, finding the secret door, then using the Invoker of Vashan you were given at the end of the campaign to go in and defeat the World Tier 1 or 2 version of Vashan, which then drops you a recipe to then craft a key for World Tier 3 specifically, so you have to go to World Tier 3 to one of the three specific malignant tunnels to go to the hidden door to go defeat World Tier 3 Vashan, then you get a recipe to craft the World Tier 4 version of the key, which you then have to craft and take to the world to four malignant three of six dungeons, go to the secret door, defeat Vashan. You see what I'm getting at? Isn't this incredibly unnecessary, incredibly convoluted, and hilariously not explained at any point in game? What a strange system, man. What a strange system. It's a cool new boss, though. I do like it. I like the way that it has like the consistent drops, especially the world tier four version, always giving those power level 800 items. Very nice. And that we have a single target boss fight that doesn't require you to be a level 100 which is pretty cool my question is why is it so convoluted why is it not explained in game why not just like introduce him as an rng spawn like you know how the butcher occasionally shows up when you're doing dungeons and it's always exciting why not oh i stepped into a room or the final boss room of a like nightmare dungeon and instead it's vashan that would be cool speaking further on that here in town, or various towns, you have Carmen's workbench. And here you have your different crafting options. So it's pretty minor. You have your three main hearts. You're not allowed to craft raffle. We have our invokers. You're not allowed to craft a raffle invoker, but you can do the invokers of Rashan, as we just explained. Then you have your crafted caches to get random hearts, maybe a raffle heart. And then your random invokers, maybe a raffle invoker. Basically, I feel that farming your raffle hearts is just too brutal and unnecessarily bad and RNG involved right now. Basically, the best options you have is to use exploits that are probably going to be removed. That's not something that feels great to recommend, but truly the best version that you can do is maybe craft uncertain invokers or uncertain hearts for the very expensive crafting materials to maybe get a raffle invoker raffle heart. I've done quite a lot of these and I have le I've literally never got a raffle heart or an invoker from these. So to me, this is too punishing unnecessarily hard to actually get a raffle heart. Why not include some guaranteed way to get a raffle heart or raffle invoker? Basically, this crafting system is neat, but it's a little bit too RNG and a little bit too small. So they could add to this. The next topic for me has to do with the hearts themselves. Let's talk about the balancing of hearts. And straight to the point, the strongest heart in the game right now is the barber. And I think that's undeniable, undisputable. It is so unbelievably strong that is leading to ways to hit millions of damage in one hit from any classes that otherwise wouldn't be able to but for those that are hitting the hardest we're literally seeing millions hundreds of millions via this single hit it was the world first level 100 that took it to uber lilith to casually hit like 250 million in one hit which nearly one shot uber lilith which surely they didn't want us to be able to do and they did not talk about hearts in that campfire chat really at all there was one heart that was referenced that i believe was for sorcerer but i really was expecting them to be like yeah so barber it's a bit crazy right we're looking to tone that down maybe they'd say something like we're going to take a bit of time so you guys can play with it have fun but it's too strong so we will turn it down eventually but they just didn't mention it so i'm left confused the balancing of the hearts right now is weird if you look at say barbarians they're not even using theirs like none of their barbarian uniques the top barbarians that are level 100 that i look at via say default armory they're using universal hearts like barber exclusively no barbarian ones so it's obvious that the hearts need some kind of balancing and that wasn't really brought up in the campfire chat so hopefully it is addressed in the actual patch notes but yeah weird the last thing for number seven that I want to talk about specifically for season one, rather than general D4 issues, is the actual malignant elites, which is this cool new concept of, yeah, more interesting. And when they talked about it in like the trailers and before season one launched, this 
big, powerful, new elite type that's going to have new affixes, that's going to be dangerous, you have to stop and summon it, it's going to spawn adds, they're going to be powerful as hell, and really, I would argue that they're weaker than normal elite. Like me as a bone spear necromancer, I hate suppressors, man. Basically, they nullify the reflex, the coming back aspect of bone spear, which is where most of the damage is, so obviously they absolutely got my dps potential they're a problem for my build meanwhile the malignant elites are just pushovers really the worst part about them is that i have to wait to summon them and then they like get up after ages basically i think they need more mechanics more interesting mechanics an increase of difficulty but at the same time they should also maybe do something to make them better maybe more rewards or at very least like can we speed up the the rate at which they spawn they're so slow can we make them like five times as fast at spawning the second one or do away with that weird mechanic and just say the first malignant elite you see that's the final boss version then it drops a heart i don't know why we have to spawn them so slowly it kind of feels a bit clunky and awkward now let's talk about something more big picture for the game as a whole. I've talked about this before, so I'll be quick. Basically, you have your skill tree, and if you want to go back on a point, you can right-click or whatever, and it costs a bit of gold. Or you can press refund all and do it all in one go. You know what I'm going to say, right? The Paragon. Why is there not the same feature for ultimately a system that takes way longer to individually actually respect because obviously there's way more points you're spending here than say the skill tree which actually has a refund all button on that note how about we also introduce a refund the current game so i could right click at the gate here and then it would refund all the points to that gate getting rid of it sending me back here then i could do this one send me back here so i don't have to refund all of it and it's just a lot smoother. Of course, we're going to see a gold reduction in respecking. They say it's going to be a roughly 40% decrease. We don't know what that actually means. Is that going to be just skill tree refunding? Is it going to be Paragon? Is it going to be both? Really, we need improved mechanics alongside cheaper respecking, but at least there's something happening. On that note, a topic that I'm also going to be quick on because we've talked about it a lot, build loadouts. Why do we not have build loadouts still? Respecking and changing a build is a painfully awkward and slow process. To swap between all the items of the different build, even if you have all of them initially, is slow. Gold costs aside, it's an awkward process that would be resolved by having a loadout you could set up and swap between, even if it's still as expensive as it is now, although obviously it shouldn't be. This is a feature and mechanic you will see in so many of the popular ARPGs and general RPGs out there, and yet Diablo 4 just doesn't have this technology in game. It's something we've been asking for before the game even released. I don't think we'll see it in season one. They talked about it briefly in that campfire chat, but man, am I low on the hope that we'll even see it in season two. For number 10 and the final main point of the video then, something Josh brought up to me, a loot filter. What if you could choose to only see the drops you want to see? So for example, you know you're not picking up blues, you're not picking up sacreds, you're just picking up ancestral. So what if you could set a filter to only see ancestral drops? Or further, if you really wanted to, only see legendaries and uniques. What about nightmare dungeon sigils? You could filter so you never see like backstabber drops, you don't care about them, you would delete them anyway. Or specific item drops. Like what if you're after an amulet that has a specific passive on it, like evulsion for bone spear? What if you could filter to only show amulets that have evulsion on it. That would make late game farming when you really don't need everything but really specific stuff so much smoother and a nicer process and faster because you wouldn't be looting everything, checking it and then dropping it when you're disappointed. Little systems like that for a long-term ARPG where we're doing so much looting would be really nice. All right, so before we come to the conclusion on this video, I actually want to do a bonus mention. Uber Uniques, they're still so rare that they essentially will not exist for the not just majority of players, but like 99.9% .9 of players are never even going to see one. They're not going to see another player with one. This is a design choice intentional by Blizzard, but I think it's just a bit too harsh and a shame. Maybe it's time to test making them a bit less rare, maybe in season one. Maybe they could learn something in season one and then apply it in season two. Yeah, basically, I just want to see them. I want them to exist. And right now, statistically, they just don't. But yeah, there you have it. Time for the conclusion. This video, I know, might come off overly negative because of the topic, but ultimately, it's hard not to talk about things that are causing issue and give feedback without seemingly negative. I want to be clear that I am enjoying season one more than I thought I would. There are just these consistent issues, like obviously the stash and so on, that do make enjoying the game sometimes hard and frustrating. My question to you guys then is, are there any other points of feedback you could suggest? You know, relevant to season one and ideally something we could see actually implemented during the season, not like season two or three or whatever. These are the ones that I want to suggest in this video, but let me know. For now, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.
Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.